recent months, Luxembourg has found itself at an unexpected crossroads in European defense politics. For a nation often described as small but strategic, the decision to explore the acquisition of the SAM PTNG air defense system marks more than a routine procurement. It signals a potential shift in how even the smallest European states define their role in collective security. Under the European Security Action for Europe, or SAFE program, Luxembourg is studying whether joining the continent's expanding network of advanced air defense systems could transform its contribution to NATO and EU defense architectures. But why now? And what does this tell us about the evolving security logic of Europe's smallest nations? Luxembourg's interest is not occurring in a vacuum. Across the continent, air defense has returned to the top of national agendas. The war in Ukraine, combined with an intensifying missile and drone threat from both state and non-state actors, has reawakened Europe to vulnerabilities it long outsourced to American systems like the Patriot. SAFE, a new 150 billion euros EU-backed mechanism, was created precisely for this reason, to incentivize joint European acquisitions, strengthen the continent's defense industry, and reduce dependency on foreign suppliers. Under its rules, at least two states must jointly procure the same system to receive financial support. That's why discussions about Luxembourg's SAMPA TNG evaluation are as much about politics as they are about missiles. For Eurosam, the Franco-Italian joint venture of MBDA and Thales that produces SAM PT, the timing couldn't be better. Denmark's selection of the system in September 2025 gave the program new momentum, positioning it as Europe's indigenous alternative to the Patriot. France and Italy already operate the system, both upgrading to the new NG standard, while several other states, including Hungary, Portugal, and even the Baltic countries, are in various stages of assessment. If Luxembourg joins, it would not only diversify its defense portfolio, but also embed itself deeper within the Benelux and EU defense integration framework. A single battery may not sound like much, but in symbolic terms, it would be another anchor in Europe's pursuit of autonomy in the defense sector. The SAFE mechanism is the unseen driver behind these conversations. It transforms what would otherwise be prohibitive purchases into viable multilateral investments. Luxembourg, with a 2025 defense budget approaching one euro 18 cents billion, or roughly 2% of national income, can suddenly think bigger. It already funds advanced programs like GovSat2 for secure communications, R&D and drone technologies, and direct support for Ukraine. Yet, air defense has remained a gap. Without combat aircraft of its own, Luxembourg has relied on allies for air policing. A mobile, interoperable system like SAMPI TNG could change that equation, allowing the country to protect critical national infrastructure, host NATO deployments, or contribute meaningfully to collective defense operations. The SAMPI TNG itself represents a significant leap in capability over the original system. Built around a new generation of rotating AESA radars, such as the Thales Ground Fire 300 or Leonardo's Kronos GMHP, it offers 360 degree coverage, tracking more than a thousand targets with detection ranges exceeding 350 kilometers. Its vertical launchers each hold eight Aster 30 B 1 NT missiles, scalable up to six launchers per battery for a total of 48 interceptors. Those missiles can engage a full spectrum of threats aircraft, cruise missiles, drones, and even maneuvering ballistic missiles up to 600 kilometers away. They reach speeds of Mach 4.5 comma, guided by an advanced active seeker and the PIF PAF control system that gives them extraordinary agility. Reaction times are measured in seconds and the entire battery can be deployed in under 15 minutes. To a small country such modularity matters. The SAMP TNG can defend a city, an airbase, or even a deployed contingent abroad without requiring the logistical footprint of an air force. For Luxembourg, that means flexibility. It could host a shared Benelux air defense detachment, deploy a unit under NATO command, or use it to protect strategic assets such as satellite ground stations or military command infrastructure. In the broader European context, it could also serve as an operational link between Belgium's potential future air defense system and the Netherlands' radar and command networks. In other words, Luxembourg's participation, though numerically modest, could help close one of the gaps in the integrated European air and missile defense, IEMD puzzle. There's also an industrial logic. By joining the SAFE framework, Luxembourg would contribute to the sustainability of Europe's missile production line. The Aster missile family is scaling up fast. Production is expected to triple from 2025 levels to more than 300 missiles per year by 2028. France, Italy, and Denmark have already placed significant orders, ensuring economies of scale and long-term logistic stability. This matters for future customers because interoperability depends not only on compatible electronics but also on shared maintenance chains, spare parts, and training pipelines. 
A Luxembourg order, however small, adds political and financial weight to this ecosystem and strengthens Europe's hand in maintaining autonomy from U.S. and Israeli systems. Critics, of course, question whether such a system makes sense for a microstate. Luxembourg's entire territory could theoretically be covered by a single long-range battery. But that argument misses the point. Modern European defense is no longer about territorial self-defense alone. It's about collective capability. By investing in an interoperable system, Luxembourg aligns itself with a continental strategy designed to deter and, if necessary, defeat aerial threats across shared airspace. Its contribution would be deployable, relevant, and politically visible. In NATO terms, that translates into influence, a currency that matters as much as hardware. The alternative, doing nothing, would carry its own risks. Europe's air defense landscape is rapidly consolidating. The Patriot system remains the dominant architecture in Central and Northern Europe, with Germany's European Sky Shield Initiative, ESI, attracting new members each year. But this dominance comes with strings, dependence on U.S. industry and export controls, limited European content, and long delivery queues. SAM PTNG, by contrast, offers a European-controlled system built within the EU with shorter procurement lead times. For countries that want sovereignty and defense policy, that distinction matters. Luxembourg's potential participation thus isn't just a technical choice, it's a strategic statement about which industrial and political camp it wishes to support. Still, timing will be critical. The Luxembourg government has indicated that Defense Minister Yuriko Bakas will present a roadmap to the Council of Government before any decision is made. Given Denmark's recent order and the safe funding cycle, a window of opportunity likely exists through 2026. If Luxembourg aligns its procurement schedule with one or two other small European states, Portugal or Slovenia, for instance, it could access favorable financing terms and shared support structures. If it delays, it risks being locked out of the first safe wave of joint acquisitions. Ultimately, the case of Luxembourg illustrates a broader transformation in European defense thinking. Small states no longer view themselves as passive beneficiaries of alliance security, but as active nodes within a network defense grid. The SAFE program provides the economic scaffolding. Systems like the SAMP TNG provide the military substance. Together, they form the backbone of an emerging European strategic autonomy, one built not on replacing NATO but on strengthening it through European competence. So will Luxembourg take the leap? On paper, the logic is compelling. Financial incentives, interoperability with allies, industrial dividends, and a credible leap in national capability. Yet, politics will decide. For now, the country is studying its options carefully, balancing cost, contribution, and commitment. But one thing is clear. The era when small European nations could remain spectators in high-end defense is ending. In the skies above Europe, the new measure of sovereignty is no longer the size of your territory, but the reach of your radar.